Spotlight. This is Akashvani. In the special series 2025, the year of reforms, now we bring you a discussion on transforming India's energy sector. The participants are Narendra Taneja, energy analyst, and Rajesh Lake, anchor. Today we are talking about what many are calling India's energy moment, a year when big reforms in nuclear power, critical minerals, electricity and renewables have finally moved from paper to practice. To help us unpack what changed in 2025 and what it means to all of us, we have with us Narendra Taneja, energy expert. Thank you for being with us, Narendra. Thanks for having me. Okay, to start with, uh, when you look at 2025, why do you see it as a turning point in India's energy story and not just another year of big announcements? Well, interesting point. I mean, when you look at, I think the biggest news has been, of course, the initiatives launched by the government opening a nuclear power sector for the private sector. You know, of course, you know, big things happened, you know, long time ago when, you know, we struck a deal with the United States, which opened up in a way the nuclear power sector of India for international investment as well as for, for domestic investment. But we saw not much really happened. The reason, main reason was that there was still kind of perception that oh, the, it's not that attractive. Private sector companies, especially, you know, coming domestic as well as international players, they were looking at India with tremendous hope and optimism. But at the same time, there were quite a few concerns that they had, were constantly conveying to the government of India. And with the government he studied that very carefully and then decided basically to come out with the kind of reforms that the nuclear power sector in India needed. And the result is that an initiative which is called Shanti or Peace, which India has always used nuclear power only for peace, unlike some other countries, especially in our neighborhood. And what so this is to convey that look, India has now opened up nuclear power sector for big and small and medium sized projects or medium sized investments to small investments in terms of nuclear power production for both domestic players as well as for international players. So that is kind of already getting a lot of traction from international investors as well as domestic investors. If you look at 2025, government has taken two major initiatives. Number one is the nuclear power sector, which is opened up, which as I said, already getting a lot of traction. Secondly, when it comes to investment in deep water and ultra deep water oil and gas exploration. So India has opened up, made it more attractive for both domestic and international players and results are there for everybody to see. As I said, that's another sector which is actually getting a lot of traction. Okay. So you mentioned the nuclear energy. The Shanti bill has been described as ending a six-decade pause. In simple terms, what does this new law actually change, Narendra? So far, the nuclear power was considered, quote-unquote, strategic. And it was very tightly controlled by the government to the extent that the minister in charge for nuclear power was always the one who was sitting, you know, in the prime minister office. And then the Ministry of Defense and others were very closely associated with it. Foreigners used to call it very important, very attractive, but they say, look, how do we get into it? That was despite the kind of deal that India had signed with the United States. When you look at India's landscape and whether you want to tie with a state government or government of India company or a private sector company for 1,000 megawatt power plant or a 2,000 megawatt power plant or even beyond 10,000 megawatt power plant, which are, as you know, not only are being discussed, are already on the table in a couple of cases under execution. But now if you want to invest only 100 megawatt nuclear power plant. You can do that, whether you're a domestic player or you're an international player. At the same time, government has also set aside some money for research and development, especially in the smaller nuclear power reactors. So for India, the importance is that since we are not as blessed as other countries like Russia and Saudi Arabia in terms of oil and gas and fossil fuels, and we have some good reserves of coal, but again, the coal is a challenge because of emissions and all that. When we look at the safe environment and making sure that we are part of the global community, taking care of the global environment, then I think a nuclear power and solar are the best option. You look at India energy future, 2050, 2060 and 2070 beyond is going to be all about nuclear power one way or another, including solar. So our Prime Minister, Mr. Narendra Modi, also had said quite a bit on this particular topic. So let's hear what the PM said. Nuclear energy, mein, das naye nuclear reactor teji se kaam kar rahe. 2047 तक जो कि हमने विकसित भारत का लक्ष्य तय किया है जब देश की आजादी के 100 साल होंगे हम परमाणु ऊर्जा क्षमता 10 गुना से भी अधिक बढ़ाने का संकल्प लेकर के आगे बढ़ रहे हैं रिफॉर्म एक निरंतर प्रक्रिया है हम न्यूक्लियर एनर्जी के क्षेत्र में बहुत बड़े रिफॉर्म लेकर के आए 
अब हमने प्राइवेट सेक्टर के लिए भी परमाणु ऊर्जा को इसके द्वार खोल दिए हैं सो हाउ इम्पोर्टेंट आर द क्रिटिकल मिनरल्स आफ्टर न्यूक्लियर एनर्जी दैट वी टॉक्ट अबाउट नरेंद्र वाई आर थिंग्स लाइक लिथियम कोबोल्ट एंड रेयर अर्थ सडली सो इम्पोर्टेंट फॉर इंडिया एंड वॉट इज द नेशनल क्रिटिकल मिनरल मिशन ट्राइंग टू अचीव एंड हाउ डज इट हेल्प इंडिया अवॉइड बींग टू डिपेंडेंट ऑन अ फ्यू कंट्रीज फॉर दीज मिनरल्स but when you look at india's recent history let's say last 4 5 years we have come a very long way in terms of transforming our economy in the context of digital transformation so when you look at the digital transformation and now with ai artificial intelligence you know we are firmly entering into the age of electricity and into the age of ai so when you talk of age of electricity and age of ai you need kind of you know more electricity on the one hand at the same time we need equipment you need tools you need cells you need infrastructure which basically is going to be as modern as possible in terms a in terms of electricity supply and b in terms of you know its application for artificial intelligence plus the kind of digital age that we are talking about the digital economy that we are working on and in all that when you look at all the equipments required all the tools required lithium and cobalt and critical minerals they play a very very important role right now our dependence on on all these things is very high on imports at the same time our scientists our teams are saying that we actually have got tremendous potential in terms of going for exploration and production of critical minerals in our own country they are pointed out to leh uh, they are pointed out to ladakh they are talking about rajasthan they are talking about parts of gujarat parts of maharashtra and also in couple of other areas so the government has come out with this mission in order to go for exploration production of critical minerals at the same time indian companies both public sector private sector are also looking at joint venture potential overseas so that we can own you know those kind of mines and bring that to india the prime minister also talked about the deep sea mission to extract uh, these critical minerals let's hear what he said aaj pura vishwa critical mineral ko lekar ke bahut hi satark ho gaya hai hamare liye bhi critical minerals mein आत्मनिर्भरता बहुत अनिवार्य है और इसलिए नेशनल क्रिटिकल मिशन हमने लॉन्च किया है नरेंद्र इफ वी मूव टू द पावर सेक्टर यू नो पीपल विल रिमेंबर द इलेक्ट्रिसिटी अमेंडमेंट बिल 2025 व्हिच प्रॉमिसेस मोर कंपटीशन एंड बेटर सर्विस इन पावर डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन व्हाट चेंजेस माइट अ हाउस होल्ड और स्मॉल बिजनेस एक्चुअली नोटिस इन द नेक्स्ट फ्यू इयर्स well you see the whole initiative if we look at and read between the lines is basically to get more investment into a power production and b power uh, transmission and c in the power distribution and to make it competitive at the same time as you know that this sector is still largely dominated by public sector utilities or utilities controlled by various state government as you know electricity is largely a state government subject under the constitution but central plays very an important role in terms of the power production like ntpc nhpc and solar power corporation and so on and so for nuclear power corporation also but here the idea is basically on the one hand to bring about the kind of reforms or the changes so that it can attract more investment at the same time to make sure that you know best and the latest technologies is available so that you know you can also achieve energy efficiency but at the same time when you look at the entire country there are many still many pockets where sometime consumers whether you are a domestic consumer or an industrial consumer you struggle so this 2025 initiative is basically to streamline the sector. in such a way that is become more competitive is more consumer friendly and at the same time is more investor friendly uh, so that you know as we enter into the age of electricity we are also talking about you know electric vehicles across the country as part of the government of india initiative and we focus more on the urban areas but you know step by step the whole country you know so that we can reduce our dependence on imports of oil and so on and so forth this is part of the same strategy so that you know the state government cities municipalities panchayats they are only equipped they are already not only to kind of consume electricity but wherever possible they can also participate in terms of you know production of electricity transmission of electricity and distribution of electricity uh, let's come to renewables uh, narendra india is now among the top countries in solar and wind uh, what did we get right over the last uh, decades to reach that scale so quickly and i've heard that uh, india has met its paris climate commitments ahead of schedule and that uh, non fossil s- sources are already around 44% of installed the capacity what does that achievement mean in practical terms well first you said what actually had made the difference only yeah. one policy 
Hmm. Policy and the killer instinct. The government of India from day one has been very clear since 2014 that look, this is the direction we want to go. We want to basically realize India's potential in terms of renewable and as aggressively as possible. Prime Minister himself had shown that when he was Chief Minister of Gujarat. So he basically brought that template at the center, and the results are there for everybody to see. What he achieved in solar, the power and renewable energy sector, he has achieved that now across the country. Whatever we had committed to the global community at the Paris Climate Summit, we have already delivered. If you look at 2025 data, we are the third largest producer of electricity in the world today, and 45 to 50 percent of the electricity is actually is coming from renewable. You look at other, okay. even the developed countries, they are not there yet. Hmm. We have already reached there. So I think it's all making right policy, but at the same time making sure the policy is implemented. In 2025, for instance, in the last budget, the government talked about distributed solar. Distributed solar, basically, where the panchayats and the villages they can actually set up their own grid, produce their own electricity using solar panels, and then basically work out their own economics. It's a distributed solar, which means it's not really connected to grid, but if they have a surplus power, they can be connected to the grid, which is going to create a major revolution. Let's hear what the prime minister also had to say about the green hydrogen. India installed non-fossil fuel capacity increased nearly 300 percent in the last 10 years. Our solar energy capacity increased over 3,000 percent in the same period. Friends, green hydrogen is emerging as a promising addition to the world's energy landscape. It can help. in decarbonizing industries that are difficult to electrify green hydrogen can also act as a storage solution for surplus renewable energy india has already launched the national green hydrogen mission in 2023 we want to make india a global hub for the production utilization and export of green hydrogen Narendra, if you connect the dots, nuclear, critical minerals, power reforms, green energy, and uh, green hydrogen, as the PM just talked about, renewables. How do these pieces together support India's goal of becoming a four trillion dollar economy and a more self-reliant energy player? Well, you see, if you look at our economy, for that matter, economy of the whole world, nothing moves without without energy. And if today we are growing, you know, in the region about seven percent per annum. We need to grow at nine percent per annum, you know, in order to become a developed countries, maybe sooner than even 2047. So that can happen only if we can mobilize two things: number one, more energy, affordable energy, especially for industry, and B, at the same time, reduce our dependence on imports. That's why the government initiative, the government direction, is that we want to tap into every single source of energy. And Prime Minister talked about hydrogen. Hydrogen is a source of energy which is basically going to be more domestic, and for that. if the infrastructure is already being created and at the same time right policy incentives have been already announced and on the top of it we are talking not only hydrogen we are talking of green hydrogen which means the energy we use to produce hydrogen is also going to be eco friendly is a green energy is going to show results maybe in 6 to 7 years from now but i think that india as a country and we as an economy have already started moving in that direction so if we have to eradicate poverty in the country if we have to eradicate energy poverty in this country and if we have to make india a developed country and we have to make sure that our per capita income goes up further and that we become 10 trillion dollar economy as soon as possible right now today we are roughly 4.5 trillion dollar economy and if we have to become 10 trillion dollar economy we need more of more energy and ultimately according to pwc and the number of other institutions around the world mostly western institution they say india is going to be a 30 trillion dollar economy by 2047 okay. 2050 okay. for that we will get there for sure but we need more energy we've been discussing india's energy moment how 2025 may have quietly reset the way we think about power climate and industrial strength with narendra taneja narendra thank you for being with akashwani thanks for having me In the special series 2025 the year of reforms you were listening to a discussion on transforming India's energy sector the participants were Narendra Taneja energy analyst and Rajesh Lake anchor this program was produced and presented by the new services division of Akashvani you can listen to it on our mobile app news on AIR spotlight 